All right, so I'm going to do my best to give a voiceover on what was going on in my mind and body through this set at the WKSF World Championships in Portugal. This is um, it was the first time that I was in Europe, and I was very, very anxious. Um, it's the first time I've been apart from my family for that long. And um, as you can tell right here, getting notifications and stuff from, from the judges just trying to keep my heart rate down for prep wise. Now the first time I picked that bell up, it just literally felt like it floated up and I was watching and making sure that I wasn't going to get a no count. Um, my left side is always a more stiff side it's just always been that way um, and I think it really has to do with my hand um, I broke my wrist a long time ago and it's not as fluid so my catch and drop sometimes people can't tell but I mean that's a thing um, at, at the level I'm at you should probably not be able to tell too much it should look good but to me I'm gonna pick it apart um, there's some spots where it's not as fluid but once again I'm trying to do the best I could I didn't want to tear um, I don't train with chalk often I definitely I don't even train practice with chalk um, I kind of save that for really really long sets um, if you know the stuff that I do through my kettlebell only muscle gain programs everything I did on those programs was prep for this moment. This is just specialization when it comes to kettlebell sport. Um, so I was just focusing, watching the judge, making sure I saw that number change before I moved. So yeah, I felt that I could have gone faster and I think I possibly could have got more reps on my left arm if I had gone faster but like I said I didn't want to have that mental um, break of hitting a no count my goal to be at this level my goal wasn't to win per se but to show the best form that I possibly could um, could achieve basically show everybody my, my clients and people that I work with all across the world um, basically the model of what I do is to execute that out there and show how it works um, so pacing focus um, breathing tension uh, I'm trying to think of, I'm just going to kind of talk about the stuff that I see um, you're probably wondering uh, the shoes that I wore are definitely not kettlebell um, or any type of Olympic sport lifting shoes. They're actually Vivo barefoot, more like a leather top shoe. Um, so some people think it might be like more of a casual everyday shoe, and that's what it is. I wear them because they're comfortable, they're flat. I can feel the ground, and people were talking about that the, that the platform was a little spongy, and um, I didn't want that for power transfer. As you can tell, um, I'm a bigger guy. I was in the um, over 95 kilogram weight class. Um, this is a 24 kilogram bell. Uh, I had never used this type of bell before. It seemed similar, and that's why I always train with different ones. The window was different. It was hitting my arm in a different place than I was used to. But I mean, that's the whole thing. Like you can't just pick one kettlebell to use for the rest of your life because if you compete you're gonna have to use something different so I like to trade different ones now here I'm starting to get a little fatigued in my grip um, and it's starting to change my form a little bit I'm at 66 reps so sometimes yeah right there is when I started to notice I'm starting to do an under squat a little bit because my grip was fatiguing a little bit so I figured the less that I could you know give the bell a flight um, they would save my hands a lot of people really don't care about tearing their hands well I do because I like to train um, 
a couple days later I did more anyway I was getting ready to switch and the decision to switch at 75 I made up in my mind and there it is that last one so carefully switching to the other hand and here's where you can notice this is my very very fluid side um, now the goal is to get your heart rate back down because it's not just physical but mental at that point um, that hand switch a lot of things could possibly go wrong you could fumble the bell you could lose the bell if you're going for that extra very last rep obviously the farther you go the more likely you are to have a slip in your grip or a mess up so I thought it would be best to go switch a little sooner so even if I had the same amount of reps on the other side I was at 150 um, I wouldn't say it's for my level it's not great but I thought in my mind when people asked me what I was shooting for I said I was going to shoot for between 180 and 200 I've never got 200 snatches even in practice um, I think maybe the closest was close to 190 or so but mentally I wanted to prepare I wanted to exude positivity as far as what I was going to do so I said you know 180 to 200 that's what I'm shooting for because if I said I was going to shoot for 150 I could have got close to that and kind of taken off the gas but anyway so here at this point I started noticing through my peripheral a little bit you know my vision once again I stared at that judge I stared at his, his face the whole time the numbers when I saw the numbers move I'd go from a next rep and as you can tell that's this isn't a crazy fast pace and there I noticed something I believe someone set the bell down or I heard something it sounded like fatigue so maybe I checked it out and uh, kind of adopted a more angular snatch style here and I started to really lock into that groove um, got a lot of cheers from the crowd so I knew something was feeling good but once again I just kept with my pace it is the pace that I always do and I'm pretty sure here is when someone started to put the bell down um, there were six competitors my goal was just to focus and do my absolute best. I was number six in the line. Um, so to my right, everybody was there. Um, I believe there is um, possibly Scotland, Brazil, uh, Australia, Denmark, I think. Maybe Hungary and myself. Um, but I felt really good here. And I noticed that I was at like seven and a half minutes and then it started to get even more fluid and that's the thing like you can all if you sprint the beginning chances are you're going to wear yourself out really fast you can always go faster towards the end i feel and once then something's drawn my attention but i just kept focusing i tried to breathe through my nose and then one one down and I knew that I was that person was ahead of me by 10 reps in the first couple minutes and I knew right here I was starting to catch up no matter where he was I looked over there to see but I started breathing um, through my nose as much as possible because that really helps you keep your sympathetic nervous system in check not saying that it was out of hand but it sure was out of hand before the competition I felt great the day before but the morning of I literally had to talk myself out of the hotel I had to talk to some of my friends or teammates got a really funny message from one of the best in the world my friend Kim Fox basically um, I'll post that later just to <laughs> the, her recommendations for <laughs> me just to relax um, but here I started speeding up because I had one more minute to go and as you noticed I'm going a little bit more of what people were considering a fast paced, hard style, shortened um, snatch. But notice the fixation every single rep. The bell's not wobbling, it's locked there till the judge moves me. 
and then I was starting to go a little faster. I wanted to get more reps. Um, but all in all, it was just an overwhelmingly enjoyable weekend set. Um, it was one of the best sets that I think I've ever done as far as being methodical in what I like to teach. So there's down goes another, and I started noticing the bells being placed on the platform, and I still had some time. So 167, I ended up with 172, and I looked over to the right, and I noticed it was the that was the top score in my weight class, and there it is, fast right at the end. And uh, literally, just to hear everyone cheer was amazing. Um, so I guess they panned like over there, 140, 134, 163, and then something. But anyway, I, it was just absolutely great time. Met. A lot of people um, that I had known that have done some of my muscle building programs uh, from all over the world and uh, got to spend some more time with great athletes and minds in the kettlebell sport. Like I said, I like to train for, you know, longevity and life and then this was just a specification, um, sorry, a specific thing, specific goal and I did my best. So there. Hands after I didn't didn't tear. It was amazing. Um, got the gold first place. Um, shared from some friends. And then uh, met some people from all over the world. Awesome people that did incredibly well as well. And um, yeah, watched some marathon sets. Watched all different stuff. Had some really good fun times and experiences with people that I've never met before but had known from the internet. Um, just some great time sharing a lot of golds. We gold medals we ended up getting fourth out of 26 teams in the world and uh, ended that vacation with a positive note. So 